Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Nuke alert. Vladimir Putin has placed the world's most powerful Armageddon nuclear rocket, dubbed Satan-2, on combat duty in a haunting new threat to the West. Vladimir Putin has placed the world's most powerful Armageddon nuclear rocket, dubbed Satan-2, on combat duty in a chilling new threat to the West. It has the potential to obliterate the United Kingdom some 1,600 miles away in just six months minutes. And with an operational range of up to 11,180 miles, the deadly missile is reported to have no equivalent in the West in terms of the terror it could unleash. Russian propagandists have boasted one strike could sink Britain under the sea. We do turn now to the war in Ukraine as we learn more about the latest U.S. aid package. Officials tell ABC News that it includes depleted uranium shells. ABC's Britt Klenet joins us from Kyiv with more on what we're learning and and more on what this all could mean. The next U.S. aid package for Ukraine could, for the first time, include depleted uranium rounds for Abrams tanks and other fighting vehicles. Officials told ABC News this could be announced as early as next week. Depleted uranium, it's useful for penetrating advanced armor, and it could help Ukraine take out Russian tanks. But it's, it's really controversial. You know, critics say there could be serious health risks when inhaling it, like cancer and birth, de de birth defects, rather. Ukraine Ukrainian troops do appear to be making notable progress against heavily fortified positions in the south. Meanwhile, Russia fired dozens of drones at the southern Odessa region overnight, damaging a port near the Romanian border and injuring at least two people. A U.S. official tells CBS News that North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un plans to meet this month with President Vladimir Putin in Russia for the first time since 2019. They're expected to discuss the possible sale of weapons to bolster Russia's war in Ukraine. The White House is calling on Kim to cease negotiations with Putin and commit to his promise not to provide arms to Moscow. But it looks like a major deal between the repressive regimes is close. Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un are no strangers. The leaders met in the far eastern Russian city of Vladivostok in 2019 for their first ever summit where they vowed to boost ties between their nations. Now, 18 months into President Putin's unprovoked war on Ukraine, Moscow wants help from Pyongyang. According to the New York Times, a major weapons deal is on the table. With Kim expected to make the roughly 400-mile journey back to Vladivostok on his armored train to meet with Putin later this month. He will reportedly discuss exchanging a significant quantity of North Korean-made weapons and ammunition for advanced Russian satellite technology, nuclear-powered submarines, and food aid. Whatever's agreed, Putin's brutal war grinds on. At a media briefing alongside the Turkish president, he lashed out at Kyiv's counteroffensive, saying, It's not a stalling, it's a failure. On a visit to an undisclosed location, President Vladimir Zelensky met with frontline soldiers. It's very useful to hear from those who go into battle directly, he said, to know what's lacking and what needs to be changed. The Biden administration is expected to announce a new military aid package for Kyiv later this week. Weapons that, for Ukrainian forces, can't consume enough.
Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. They have a history of tense relations. Now, the Kurdish-led SDF and some Arab tribes are at war. Alliances in Syria's northeastern province of Deir ez-Zur are falling apart. Tribal leaders want an end to what they describe as discriminatory and repressive rule by the SDF in the majority Arab province. Fighting has spread outside the province. SDF positions are being targeted by Syrian opposition factions that reject the regional autonomy. The SDF now controls around a quarter of Syria, the largest part that's outside government control. Many warn that without a settlement, the worst battles in the region in years will destabilize and possibly change the map in this corner of Syria. Smoke billowed over Khartoum's skyline on Sunday as the sound of artillery fire rings out. An aerial bombardment that marks a weekend of bloodshed in the fifth month of war between Sudan's army and paramilitary fighters. Further north in Omdurman, residents are struggling to make ends meet. Many haven't received salaries for several months, leaving them unable to feed their families. The reason why there is a lot of bread on the shelves is because people aren't able to buy it. People here don't buy in large quantities. People are suffering. The days of customers coming in with plenty of cash are over. The country was plunged into war mid-April after a deepening power struggle exploded into conflict between the Sudanese army chief, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, and Hermeti, the paramilitary rapid support forces commander. According to the UN, over half of Sudan's 48 million population now require humanitarian aid, and six million are one step away from famine. Bread is available, but people can't buy it. A loaf costs 70 Sudanese pounds. It's too expensive. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat, as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. Luke 21:25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity, or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. A night of rioting in Varnham a largely immigrant neighborhood in the Swedish city of Malmö. Hundreds of people have burned dozens of vehicles and clashed with law enforcement in an outburst of anger after an act of Quran burning took place in the city. Damage to property has been substantial. At the moment, the number of victims is unknown, but there were scenes of considerable violence. The clashes erupted during the day on Sunday after an Iraqi refugee set fire to the Muslim holy book. Dozens of people came to the area to rebuke the activist. Law enforcement intervened to stop him from being attacked and several people were arrested. Muslim leaders in Sweden have called on the government to find ways to stop such acts. Sweden dropped its last blasphemy laws in the 1970s and the government has said it has no intention to reintroduce them. Violent clashes in Tel Aviv putting the country's immigration policies front and center. Get up, get up, get up. After hundreds of asylum seekers from the African country of Eritrea confronted pro-Eritrean government groups. 
Israeli police stepped in deploying tear gas, stun grenades, and even live rounds into the crowd after officers said they felt their lives were in danger. The confrontations come as Eritrea's totalitarian government marks 30 years in power. Why did we run from our country, said this protester? Because this dictator. It's a government many demonstrators in Israel say they were forced to flee. I feel sad because uh, I saw a lot of people have been injured. The Israeli National Emergency Service reports over 100 people were injured in the clashes, including 30 police officers. Prime Minister Netanyahu says the protesters crossed a line. His national security minister visited the scene and suggested that those who took part should be placed in detention until they're deported. Immigration has been a divisive issue in Israel for generations. But it's taken on new urgency as Netanyahu seeks to push through his judicial overhaul plan. The nation's high court has previously blocked laws targeting Eritrean asylum seekers. Now Netanyahu is sticking to his long-standing rhetoric, calling those who protested over the weekend illegal infiltrators. Government uprisings are now a daily occurrence in our world. A man, I believe, who is alive and well today will soon come on the world scene seeming to have all the answers, and he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen. And with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind, but his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one-world government. He will control a one-world religion. He will control a one-world monetary system, known as the Mark of the Beast. It is evident that planet Earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction, and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth, who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin, will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict 
and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day, that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Hezbollah's Nasrallah warns Israel against targeting Hamas leaders in Lebanon. Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah firing threats at Israel. Any assassination on Lebanese soil that affects a Lebanese, Palestinian, Iranian or others cannot be tolerated and will be answered with a severe reaction. And we will not be silent about it. We will not allow Lebanon to once again be an arena for assassinations. And we will not accept changing the existing rules of engagement. The Israelis should be very well aware of this fact. Nasrallah refer Referring to deputy head of Hamas, Salah al-Aruri, currently in the Lebanese capital. Aruri is seen as the mastermind behind the current terror wave in Israel. His name was even mentioned by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This comes after he said Hamas is ready for a multi-front war should Israel resume its policy of targeted assassinations. But this is part of an ongoing war of words between Israel, Hamas and Hezbollah, which has seen a terror wave in the West Bank and Hezbollah provocations on the northern border with Lebanon. Deepening Russia-Iran alliance should worry Israel. Iran has sent a strong warning message to the enemies as they armor up with brand new Russian Yak-130 fighter jets in what is said to be a major development in the region. Iran's Air Force has just recently received an upgrade in the shape of Yak-130 fighter jets. The jets that had made their way from Russia are sending strong messages as these new advanced jets are set to improve the training and combat capability of the Air Force. The newly upgraded Yak-130 is designed to prepare Iranian Air Force pilots to fly advanced aircraft, such as the fourth generation fighter jets, which has been Iran's goal for quite some time. Over the years, Iran has been seeking to acquire Russian aircraft in the hopes of upgrading their fleet and pilot program. In a report by an Iranian local news agency, the jets have entered the country and joined the Shahid Babai Air Base in Isfahan in central Iran. The report added that the new arrivals were sent as part of an arms contract with the Russian Federation, as both Iran and Russia are currently under international sanctions that restrict trade, allowing the countries to forge strong ties over the past year including military cooperation. Notably, Iranian drones have played a crucial role in Russia's continuous war on Ukraine. Iran has denied accusations coming from Kyiv, saying that drones were supplied to Moscow only before the war began. However, the U.S. National Security Council estimated that over 400 drones have been sent to Russia from Iran since August. As Iran prepares for October and for the lift of multiple of its sanctions, new military upgrades point at the anticipation for future military exports and imports and the strengthening of Iranian forces. As we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold, it seems as though the War of Gog and Magog is looming on the horizon. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, Many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, 
and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator, who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. Luke 21, 26 through 28 Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation 
as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.